very good afternoon to one and all. Thank you so much for the lovely introduction. And here I am not to talk about myself or the work that I do, but I am here to talk about you. Yes, let me ask you, right now, what are you worth? Or do you know actually how to define your self-worth? Don't worry, this is not a one-to-many mass therapy or a mass uh, encouragement motivational session, but something that I would like to ensure a new frame reference is introduced to each one of you today after this talk. May I just let you in on a secret? Even if you don't know how much you are worth right now, I do. And if I do, and the social media companies do, the avid social media users, whomever you all have been using right now, uh, people with malicious intents, perpetrators, hackers as we call them, or basically information stealers also know. The topic for today, which I chose was, let's backtrack to visualize the future. Antithetical or paradoxical in its nature, isn't it? But as we say that the reaps of the future lie in the seas of the past. Let me take one similar example of the first case that I had solved when I was posted. Uh, that was of a power grid attack or a power grid hack. And uh, the ultimate outcome of that case understood to be that humankind had made one of the most cardinal sin ever to protect such a critical asset. That was username, admin, password, password. This is something that as an ingrained society, security as a term has always been curative rather than preventive. And hence, it's more than high time now to backtrack, to close our mistakes so that we have a safer future. One example which basically outlined the genesis of cyber warfare was the attack by North Korea on Sony Pictures. What was done was a malicious program was inbuilt, input into Sony servers, and nope, it didn't start attacking the first day itself. It stayed there for three years, collected data, collected information, collected all the malicious codes that were possible and impregnated the system too. And when the time was right, so did the hackers feel. Let's take away their data. That's why the question today that we need to ask is, are we really important to those people? Is that my data that's going to be taken and sold off? Let's find out. Since the dawn of human ages, human beings have always been driven by conflicts. In fact, there is not an age, uh, either fictional or even historical, that cannot be defined with or without a war or a conflict that took place. Either it was war over land, water, air, space. In fact, I think the days are not far when we may be having small penguin armies over the Arctic and the Antarctica regions as well. So are we right now moving to a transitioning phase over the virtual world attacks? That's something that we need to see is going to be the next battlefield. Cyber kinetics as a word is defined as whenever a transitional manifestation is done from something online to something offline. Let me give you an example. Let's say a world leader is having a heart condition and uses a pacemaker. This is something that because of open source intelligence or the wide array of social media pointers that is available on each one of us right now is available. A perpetrator gets his hand on the build of the pacemaker that the world leader is using. Wouldn't that enable the perpetrator to misuse that access and stop the pacemaker of that leader? Far-fetched, but definitely possible. And possible now, not five years later. This is the age of cyber kinetics that we are entering. So hence, according to our discretion, according to our research, we foresee that the future wars are going to be in the ranges of pharma warfare that we've seen during COVID-19, as second is cyber warfare. Cyber warfare is nothing but every nation utilizing its most intelligent assets, going ahead and utilizing according to their own tradecrafts or modus operandi. This was something that I've learned earlier in my career, where I kept on using the word MO for any intelligent activity that was being done. But tradecraft is the ones that good ones do, and MO or modus operandi is the one that bad guys do. 
Now the square of cyber kinetics that has been analyzed by my team. So roughly we've taken over 1800 plus cases in the due course of our career. And I could rather classify it into just four of these vertices. Cyber crime is a game of fear or of greed designed and orchestrated just to take away either your data or your money. You take up any fraud, give me any example. This is something that will govern across these four vertices. In fact, just as magic is defined by the rules of misdirection, cyber is not only guided by manipulation, but misdirection also. Let me give you an example. You get a message on your phone. Uh, your device seems to be compromised. Please click on this link to safeguard your device right now. We have not received your electricity bill payments or your phone bill payments. And if you don't take action right now, this is something as a fear will be instilled in you. After that, one loses one's sense of critical thinking and goes over just to seeing what is the best possible shortest step one can take to avoid that immediate problem. But as we've all heard that penny wise pound foolish, if you make hurry, this is where you worry. And these are the cases that we have seen and read and analyzed. In India right now, as per the NCRB statistics, over 80,000 crimes are being reported. Now, out of those, 90% are the ones that are being just governed by one human fallacy. That is, the lack of sensitivity towards the term security by humans themselves. As we say that uh, a parent is as happy as the least happiest child. Similarly, the security of any organization here depends on the least active or the least uh, proactive employee who takes charge of security. So this is something as an acronym always comes to my mind when I see anyone being duped onto any type of social engineering cases or where senior citizens, kids were duped, misdirected, or maybe their data was stolen because just their attention was not there. Five words come to my mind, just five. Just if they were aware. Just if they were aware, this could have been avoided. Just if they were aware, this could have prevented the hacker from stealing data points for maybe a future hack as well. And that is why we have seen that in human tendencies, people tend to think, why me? Am I that valuable? Am I that valuable that some person would orchestrate an attack on me? Let me give you some good news that amateurs attack systems, but professionals attack people. Here we've seen that most of the social engineering or OSINT techniques, OSINT here stands for open source intelligence. Uh, a thorough study was rather done on OSINT case studies on profiling criminal profiles. Uh, let me start by the example of one of the most horrific, uh, terrific organizations that were there in terms of ISIS and Al Qaeda. When the profiles of their leaders or founders was done, it was found that their habits that were cultivated in childhood was something that grew on into how they were handling or mishandling the targets of their modus operandi and their uh, organization as well. So for example, if we take uh, Osama bin Laden's example, we saw that he was more of a strategic thinker. He was more of a person who planned, a person who planned across data points. And therefore, if you see the ISIS map right now, it'll be spread across a geographical area. Compared to that, Baghdadi was more of a front loan player in football. That habit transcended into he being the lone star player of having all the responsibilities shredded on his folder. And that's why ISIS map is just concentrated on certain geographical maps. That is why when we say that uh, we are a criminal profiler or we study people, we read them, and we don't play the odds, we play the man. Here, I would like to introduce a concept known as entropy. Entropy is something that I'm sure chemistry students must have definitely heard about. But I would like to introduce a concept of language entropy. When most of the languages uh, in the ancient times were being studied, we saw that the ones having average entropy was similar to the human dialects one. Let's take three examples here. A language which is just made of the letter A. So all the words in that language is just manifested by the letter A. That is a language that is said to have low entropy. A language which has all words jumbled up or maybe even a pseudocode is the one that is therefore to has high entropy. 
and the one which is a proper English language or any proper combination, repetitive combination in a particular pattern that we use right now is what is having average entropy. When we profile criminals, when we profile hackers, we define their entropy. So certain of these groups from China, from North Korea and other such malicious groups have their own insignia attached to all types of um, modus operandi that they have been using. Okay, now a very interesting concept came to light when we were seeing certain crime rings or crime hacks being investigated. Right now, the organization of crime or crime as a service basically has assumed a corporate structure as well. So in fact, hackers have a role right now to think whether they want to attack one big bank or institution which has thousands of people protecting and responsible for their security or Let's go and attack only 10,000 people with certain unit volumes and there they have a better probability of getting the same. In addition to that, we have seen where security professionals are being recruited by uh, leading cybersecurity firms. Hacker groups too have their managerial hierarchy. They start with penetration testers or people who can get into any systems at any time, at any cost, whenever possible. But without being guided by the actual trade analysts who calculate for them how much is that data worth. If that data is not worth something that is more uh, useful for them, they can definitely go back and take something which is more effective and they can be using that as a bargaining chip. So that is why if we see the cumulative losses because of cybercrime as an industry has been equal to 7.2 trillion as of today morning, if we have revised our numbers in terms of the economics, this is the third largest economy after US and China. And every year, you can see half a trillion to be added to the same. This growth has been funneled 400% YOY after the COVID pandemic and to a ratio of every 11 second an attack happening with an average ransom being of 250 to $280,000. So, the question to ask is, is CAAS or cybercrime as a service becoming the new reality? In the military trade crafts, there was something designed known as the cyber kill chain or whatever methods perpetrators have used to get into the systems to take out the data. However, let me devise a term known as a cyber anti-kill chain. When a cyber kill chain starts, it starts with a term of reconnaissance, that is, finding as much information possible about the target that you have. Because if you go there with a lot of intelligence, it aids into making better decisions. So here, intelligence aids decision advantage. Second, if we go on to the intrusion into the system, they have at their candy land how much to exploit, how much to escalate, what to do and what not to do how much to keep for now, how much to keep for later. Third is basically get into the roots of your system to study what your system is made up of and how strong is it. And fourth is basically infiltrating that and removing their traces so that they can do it to the next available person. However, let's move to the anti-kill chain. If a reconnaissance activity is participated by us itself, we exactly know what are the loopholes that we have to explore. And further, if we do a re-recon, it's not possible to do a recon on somebody who's just been zero neutralized, is it? Second, once for the intruder, let's create an extruder strategy so that they cannot exploit anything. Rather, we exploit them whenever they are entering our systems or maybe even our personal area of privacy. Fourth, anti-forensics. So forensics as a term has been usually associated with medical forensics or let's say uh, diagnosis or maybe aftercare analysis that has to be done. Let's take forensics as a field which has the power to exonerate people. We take in a case where a very senior member or military member was framed by fake submissions or by deep fakes. This is something that we avidly are being using on social media right now haven't we, where we are basically superimposing and giving a lot of data sets to social media apps, websites, and creator of such algorithms as well. What they do is basically superimpose certain algorithms which studies every pixel of your face. That's too much of an intrusion. 
But when we saw and received the cases of how these uh, talks were basically befuddled or maybe even taken off and uh, uh, taken care of there, we saw that forensics played a big role in finalizing what part was morphed and what was proper. And finally, a strategy to handle the infiltrator. The infiltrator is something that definitely has in history. And if we refer to the terms of hacker entropy, it'll be helpful to find the same. Now, as I mentioned, that answers to the future lie in the past. Why do perpetrators have certain of these activities done? What is their motivator? What is their incentive? Right now, if you're in school, maybe marks or grades, or maybe a better future will be your in incentive. But here on the right, if you see, we have money, espionage, and their honor. History has it that the oppressor has become the oppressed, and the oppressed has striven hard to give it back to its oppressor. Or on the other side, if we were to protect our identities online, what should we be doing? The simple answer is dealing your online personalities as much as possible to make sure that you don't give a perpetrator or a hacker the right roadmap into your security systems. And also recover the term did know. That is, data is the new oil. So next time, whenever you are asked to share any of your personal data points or anything which you shouldn't be sharing, please do ask the question why. I remember Lord F. Tennyson quoting, yours is not to question why, but to do and die. But I insist here that do question why, otherwise soon you will be questioning why me. So as I mentioned, let's backtrack to a possibility of closing all our open loopholes and go to a cyber safe future. Thank you everyone and wish you a good evening.